Hello, this is John Fields, and this is uh, ED, EDU 543 uh, with a reflection post about Richard Barnook and open source learning. Um, so basically, in the uh, uh, in his presentation on T T E D, uh, he he pretty much relates uh, open source learning to to using internet and uh, and iTunes uh, music, music culture, and things like that, and how can we correlate, correlate uh, what has been done with the music, uh, music industry and music culture, uh, and 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 try to shift over and use it uh, in an educational manner as well. Um, so what he talks about is creating, uh, creating, ripping, uh, mixing, and burning as you would do uh, in the music part. So what he talks about with creating. Uh, creating, he's talking about with taking books and, uh, and and moving the information from the books, uh, all the different books, authors, and things like that, and compiling it into one big uh, one big network similar to iTunes. You know, in iTunes, you can scroll down and you can search, you can look for any type of music uh, that you want, genre, things like that. Well, we want to do the same thing with um, uh, with books and uh, uh, information, teaching, and things like that. So that'll make it open for everyone. Um, but the main thing he talks about with books is the fact that they're disconnected. There's some disconnects with it with the authors, uh, authors to the publishing, to the readers, and things of that nature. And one of the main people he wants to talk, he likes to talk about, are they called the shutouts? Uh, and the shutouts are the people who who simply uh, either don't have access to it, or because of a language barrier, can necessarily. Uh, Either get access or understand it once they do gain access from it, and also people that have language barriers or uh, they can't even share the information that they have, the knowledge that they have, unless they hear, unless they can speak one of the one of the known um, or more popular languages uh, throughout the world. So, um, uh, what he would like to take um, take was uh, what has been done. Oh, I'm sorry, I already talked about that. Another interesting thing that I that I thought that was interesting is he said he gave the little thought experiment and talked about how it needs to uh, um, how you can take all the information and everything, uh, rip it out of the books, rip out all the information from everything, uh, and then plug it into where everybody has accessibility to it uh, and can actually use it and gain from it. Um, and he basically says with his website that he uses and uh, uh, and the project that he runs at Rice University called Connections is it's basically an open source tools uh, and content that that he likes to share amongst with everyone else. Um, he gives a couple examples. One of the examples talks about with Katie Jones, uh, who's a music teacher who who loves to teach music and 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 what she does is uh, and is she uses she uses a site like connections to to post how to play different instruments how to read music and things of that nature um, and and currently right now she's got over six hundred thousand six hundred thousand hits per month so she's doing really well with it um, and he also he also wants to make the point that uh, with you know with the with the way uh, the economy is and the way schools are taking budget cuts and things of that nature they look at more or less the music the music program uh, that's going to take more cuts with that um, so this is a good way for anyone who wants to learn how to play the guitar the violin um, you know the bass things like that then they can uh, uh, they can go on a site like connections they can look at they can look at information uh, such as uh, mrs. Jones and and then they can also learn um, uh, learn about how to how to play the instrument and they can play it correctly um, the next part he talks about that those two things were part, more or less the uh, the creation and the rip of it and then the, the mix part of it is is taking all of the all the information that you can get and building it into into one one major product uh, building it into a custom course and things of that nature um, and then burning um, what you can do is is you take all the material as he explains you can take all the material from different authors, uh, different editors, and things like that, and then you can kind of condense it down and make it into one big document that makes it more affordable for everybody else instead of, uh, like he talks about, going out and going to the bookstore and trying to buy a, a book from a straight publisher and author, um, where uh, with, with things that Amazon are, are doing is they're taking information from this book, from that book, from this one, and that one, and they're putting it all together and making it a lot more affordable. So instead of paying like 125 something for 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 a book straight from the author, you can you can get a condensed version 
um, with all the same materials and everything else, but it's got a lot of different authors involved uh, uh, for cheaper. He said you can get it for like twenty some dollars. So, uh, so it definitely makes things more affordable. Um, uh, so it's basically taking like like burning a CD. You take the one product, um, and you mix mix it together with different songs, uh, and then you create your own CD with it, and then you can make copies as many copies as you want. Um, the next process uh, he talks about is XML, which XML is basically uh, it allows everything, it allows to combine all the content together, and is and is the framework to share all the content. So uh, what he's saying is to take all all the material within the knowledge ecosystem that he calls it, uh, and combine it together to personalize it, reuse it, connect with other things, uh, connect with other people, um, and share uh, share everything that everybody's learned. Um, you know from that material so uh, the best way the best example that he gives uh, in which I completely agree with uh, is the one within the classrooms uh, XML from in the classrooms uh, get, he was talking about how it gives uh, gives um, uh, a student a question in his class and then uh, they would also take the form they, they would take the question they would take the formula uh, and then there's also a link below it that they can click on and go to uh, go to an experiment that, so they can work on it as well and I think this is a great opportunity for 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 students to not only use the question use the use the formula but also put it into action as well as uh, as well as just you know plugging in numbers uh, it gives you a chance to do something rather than just sitting there and that leads to the, my next point uh, and quote that I really like from him was uh, uh, we don't learn until we do and I'm a visual person um, I, I, I like to do things with my hands. I like to make sure that you know I'm involved in everything. And if I'm sitting there and someone's just talking at me rather than uh, explaining it and really doing it with me or, or giving me a chance to do it as an experiment, I don't I really don't learn that well. Um, you know, so that's definitely a tool that I, I would have used, and, uh, really would have enjoyed using when I was a student in school um, at a younger age. Uh, and then he also talks about how you know we want to make this open source. We want to make this for everyone. We want to make it free. We want to make it accessible for everyone. But right now, um, how do we do that le the legal the legal way? Obviously, you can tell from the music industry uh, with Napster and LimeWire and all those people are downloading uh, music songs and things like that illegally, which you know uh, record companies and and and, and, and uh, artists were taking hits for that. So now they legalized it to where you have to pay for however many you buy, uh, where what should be the same way with uh, uh, was, uh, open source learning, excuse me. So uh, this basically just protects the author, uh, gives them full credit when credit is due, uh, it also issues the quality of the work, uh, so it stays under control with that. You don't want to get on the internet and try to look up information for a research project and you're getting false information uh, because people just, anyone and their brother just starting throwing out information uh, that isn't credited. Um, and it's also plagiarized. He talked a lot about plagiarizing in it. So um, I know for, from personal experience that if, if you want to get on if you want to get online and do a research project project, you want to make sure that you have all the right tools and make the authors get the authors um, their accreditation and things like that. So and he talked about how CC is doing a pretty good job of, of stating out all the steps and, and saying how you can share things, what you can and can't do with it uh, to make it legal. But you're always going to have people trying to beat the system. So um, so those are the main things that I, I feel that he was trying to get across um, get across through his presentation is how can we how can we take uh, open source learning how can we take things like books uh, education and knowledge and, and correlate that within like the music culture did um, and expand with that because he feels that that would be a great opportunity uh, for a learning process so in conclusion um, those are my critical thoughts and, uh, and, and summary over Richard Barnuk's uh, uh, open source of learning. Thank you.